As it is the proud American tradition, we can both ensure the security of our country and welcome desperate women and children and seniors facing ISIS brutality. My colleague, as who spoke before me, just said, our hearts go out to the refugees. But our hand of friendship does not. And it could. We could do this in a bipartisan way. If we betray our values as a country and slam the door in the face of those innocent victims of terror, we do not strengthen our security. We weaken ourselves in the fight against ISIS savage ideology. There are other things that we could be doing in a bipartisan way, and I would have hoped that that was a place we could have gone with this. And one of them relates uh, closing loopholes in the visa waiver program. Our colleagues, uh, on the Senate side today are putting forth their principles and they state if an ISIS recruit attempts to travel to the United States on a fraudulent passport, paper passport issued by a country that participates in the visa waiver program, that individual would avoid biometric screening and in-person interviews. How could we allow this loophole to exist if we are truly addressing this challenge in a comprehensive way. And if the Republicans want to make a nation safer in the face of terror, there's another clear area in which we should act. And that is we should be voting on Congressman uh, Peter King, Republican Congressman Peter King's bill, to close the appalling loophole uh, that uh, it's outrageous. It's outrageous uh, that, uh, that a person who's on the uh, terrorism watch list, listen to this, if someone is on the terrorist watch list could walk into a gun store and buy a gun. It, his bill is called the Denying Firearms and Explosive to Dangerous Terrorist Acts. Visa waiver, close the terrorist gun loophole. According to the GAO, over the last 11 years, more than 2,000 suspects on the FBI's terrorist watch list bought weapons in the United States. 